out. The first part of this interview was good, girl. You you gonna have to answer real good. I do. Good job. Oh, yeah, he do. Good job. Yeah. Okay, now we know Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. It is Carrington Allen with Code to the Vault, and I am here at the Black Book Houston Gala with our lovely owners, Mr. Jeremy and Miss Sheika. Hey. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys seen the first part of that interview. It was wonderful. But let's go ahead and bring Sheika into the conversation. We absolutely love Black Book Houston. We talked Thank a little you. about the Instagram, the journey, the mm -hmm. come up, the struggles, God, faith, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Where should we even start? Let's start with the journey. Let's start with the journey. Okay, so this journey is definitely not for the week. Mm -hmm. um, but I just had like a vision and it wasn't even this large it was just something simple i wanted to do to bring um awareness to black owned businesses in houston and i was like hey i found out about a business that was black owned i was like i didn't know it was black owned so then i was like well how many other people don't know about these black owned businesses yeah. so i was like searching online i couldn't find a place or any area one particular area where i could go and locate these black owned businesses so i was like i'm gonna make a list mm -hmm. let's let's do a list mm -hmm. and then i was like you know what i'm gonna call it the black book because you know black books are sacred mm -hmm. back in the day you yeah. know people had the little black book with the yep. important phone numbers in them the context and, mm -hmm. yeah and you know just all throughout history black books have been sacred bibles and different organizations have black books i was like let's, yeah. let's call it black book this is important to me so I want to create a space where people can find black owned businesses. So I started researching and I immediately started trying to just figure out where they at. I started just going, hitting people up. Hey, y'all follow us. This is what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then the vision just started evolving. It came from a list to a physical book to an mm -hmm. online directory to mm -hmm. how can we better these businesses and make more um just make more noise about them so everybody knows. So then yeah. it became content to tours to we here at a gala. Like yeah. this is all for black owned businesses. Everything we do is to make sure people know about black owned businesses. Yeah. And we here today because I felt like there's not a place where we can all get together and celebrate our culture and us being black and I, we should be able to give ourselves accolades. We don't have to wait to go to the Grammys. Okay. We don't have to wait to go. I wanted to make sure that these everyday movers and shakers mm -hmm. get awarded just like everybody else because they deserve yeah. it. And I'm working with, I'm on the ground working with them. So I know for a fact they're working hard. Like, yeah. and I wanted to make sure they was recognized. So that's, that's how we got you. I mm -hmm. love that story. Now he talked about walking out, stepping out on the water and just listening for the voice of God, trying not to sing, um, quitting his job. <laughs> like, let's talk a little about that because his story was great, but I know that the story combined is even greater. So, um, I've actually always been an entrepreneur. Yep. Um, I've hardly ever worked for anybody in my life. I mean, you know, growing up in high school, of course, but. This is my high school sweetheart, too, by the way. <laughs> We used to sell can we used to sell candy. All right, all right. So he's always helped me. Like I remember when we was in high school, mm -hmm. I used to come with a box of uh variety Skittles mm -hmm. and he would meet me in the middle of the, the school parking lot and I'd be like, Here you sell this and I'm gonna sell this. And we like I've always I've always been an entrepreneur. Yeah. So um that's all I know. And yeah. before Black Book Houston, I was making cakes. And you know, that was actually starting to really take off for mm -hmm. me. But I just kept feeling like, dang, you know, if only more people knew about me, yeah. like if they just knew where they could go and they could just type in on a on a search engine where they could find black owned business, yeah. maybe I could make more money. Maybe we can all make more money. Yeah. And my thought was people don't support black owned businesses because they don't know about them, not because they just don't want to support. And yeah. honestly, I've seen people come out and support like we sold out a gala yeah. and I'm like people support. You know, they especially will. when, you know, it's a good business and people need to know about that. So I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Mm -hmm. He stepped out and we've been making it work. Yeah. OK, so in that stepping out, when you guys both just kind of like said we are going to do this, like this is what we are going to do. What was like the main struggle for you guys just to speak to our entrepreneurs who are ready to step out on faith, but who are scared to struggle? Um, The struggle is 
you know, we live in a world of social media and we work on social media. Yeah. So the struggle really is you see everybody doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you feel like you're missing out. You got to sacrifice right now to get sacrifice. to where you want to get to where you want to go later. But it's almost hard, you know, because mm -hmm. like my friends, they brunch and they at the club and they trips. You know, we mm -hmm. had to miss out on those trips and we had to tell them like, hey, y'all, we can't we can't make it. Yeah. You know, our pocket's not allowing us to do that because we're so tied up and invested into our baby and what we have going on. And it's hard missing out on those things because you feel like you're getting left behind. Yeah. And for me, that was the toughest thing. Um, I really didn't have an issue this round it, with Black Book Houston and not getting support. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm surprised because like with my cake business and any other thing I've done, it's always been like, can you please support me? Can mm -hmm. you please support me? But with yeah. this... People be begging yeah. to, to be a part of to what be we're a part doing. Of the and I'm crowd. like, me? You want to you work with me? Uh -huh. Like, why? You know? Uh -huh. So it's, it's surreal because I'm not used to this kind of um, support. Yeah. So, but yeah, my hardest, my hardest struggle is feeling like I'm being left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Or like forgotten. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about like the child you. What did you want to be when you... When you were growing up, what did you want to be? And did you see yourself being this person exactly? Now, you said entrepreneur mm -hmm. all day long. You were diehard entrepreneur. But, you know, when we're younger, we think of ourselves and other things, ballerina or whatever else. Have you always had the dream to just lead and be who you are? Yeah, I want to be everything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I was playing piano. Okay. I was a cheerleader, ran uh -huh. track. Uh -huh. I was trying to model at one time. Uh -huh. I just, I don't know. I've always been a creative. So... Yeah. I can do whatever it is I put my mind to, but I've never really saw myself as anything. Um, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. So mm -hmm. for a moment, I saw myself doing it until I like got to my third year in college. I was like, ain't nobody finna be in school the rest uh, of their life. Come on, talk so, about it. So, I mean, I... She I, got a whole biology degree, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I never... I don't know what I saw myself as, I just knew I would be successful yeah. because I'm the type of person I'm going to get it regardless. Yeah. Like, oh, you ain't going to do this? I'm going I'm to make it happen. I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going I'm to make sure this happens. Uh -huh. So, it don't matter what life be throwing at me. I'll be like, oh, man. You know, we wasn't expecting this to happen. It's cool. We're going to move on. We're going to yeah. We gonna keep, we gonna keep trucking. So, yeah. I don't know. What I saw myself as, like, I'm still in disbelief that I'm this owner that people look up to. And I'm like, yeah. me? Yeah. Are you sure? But, but you know, God has, God has a way of really using you. And we talked about faith. How has God been instrumental in this business so far? Man. So honestly, like, I just woke up one day and God literally told me to do it. Yeah. Like, just, I woke up, I was like, hey, I'm going to get the DBA today. Uh -huh. And it's just been, that's pretty much how this has been. If I feel like God say something, I just move. This has just been him. It ain't even been me. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause like, this is not something I saw myself doing. This is not something I would have never, I would have never imagined this. Yeah. I could have never fathomed Black Book Houston, a yeah. platform for people yeah. to find local businesses and support black owned business. I wouldn't, I would have never, I would have never thought this. So. I just, I do what he tell me to do. And I be like, all right, you sure? You sure you want me to do this? Because a lot of times I be like trying to make sure it's not my myself talking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I be a little nervous because I'm like, I'm looking at the bank account like, mm -mm, this don't add up. Yeah. What you telling me to do and what I'm capable of doing is not adding up. Yeah. But for some reason, it's all worked out. Like during the pandemic, we were so well taken care of. Like Amen. we still thriving Everything got paid for. I had a baby. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like, I couldn't even. Like, I was so stressed out trying to figure out. Like, I was like, why would God do this to me right now? I was so upset that I got pregnant because I was in the middle of the peak or the rising point of Black Book Houston. Yeah. And I was like, no, we killing it right now. Yeah. We cannot have a baby. That's going to slow me down. Mm -hmm. And it did, in fact, slow me down. It definitely slowed me down tremendously. But... Mm -hmm. I started thinking like after I had the baby, I was I actually got mad at myself for being mad at God, at God. because I was like, bro, you really like there would have been no other time for me to do it. Yeah, I would have always been like, no, 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 we working hard. We about to we about to get this award. We about to do this. We going here. We can't we can't have a baby. We can't have a baby. Yeah. Literally, I got pregnant. I wasn't I was we wasn't planning to we were planning to have kids, but I had just asked him for three more years. <laughs> so we definitely wasn't planning to have it now, but. 
we had the baby. I ain't have to come out of pocket for anything. My baby's well taken care of. I didn't make any announcements. We were blessed beyond measures for him. Like, I just started buying diapers and wipes. He's 18, 19 months. He just made 19 months two days ago. Yeah. Like, I haven't bought clothes or anything. Yeah. So. That's why I always say Godspeed. Yeah. Because uh, Godspeed is the perfect speed. Yeah. You know, perfect like she time. said, like, this baby going to slow us down. And it did slow us down. But I feel like we needed to slow down mm -hmm. so that we could focus and handle certain things within the business and within our own lives. Yeah. So, yeah, direction is way more important than speed. It is. So I thank God for that direction. Yeah. And his plan and his timing, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. we like to go faster than God. But the thing is, like, either way, his timing is his timing. And when he says go and when he speaks a word over your life, it has to perform. Once that word leaves mm -hmm. his lips, it has to perform. So we just thank God over and over and over again. You guys, this is Black Book Houston, the official owners making the way, being trailblazers, doing it phenomenally. They are courageous. They are strong innovators and they are paving the way. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.